Um, legal aid was warning that by waiving certain protections under the right to shelter law, you could potentially put children at risk of staying in congregate intake shelters, and there were some concerns about that. I wanted to get your take on putting children in congregate shelters and the concerns around that, and, and you know, I know there's a larger crisis, so just want to speak, you know, why yeah. that wouldn't be an issue. And, and, and I respect the role that legal aids, legal aid play. You know, matter of fact, Manny, why don't you join me up here? I respect the role that legal aid uh, plays. They have a role. You know, we don't always agree, you know, and I think we should do it without being disagreeable. Just raise their issues, we're gonna raise our issues. And the part of the law that states every uh, family must have a kitchen and a bathroom. When my son went to college in a dorm, he didn't have his own kitchen and bathroom. And he still did a great job, you know. So to that's just not realistic when you're getting 4,200 people in your city that you're going to find a place with kitchen and a bathroom. Our desire is not to put children and families in dorm dormitory settings. Our desire is to manage an, a humanitarian crisis. And when you look at the law, what it was designed to do during that time had nothing to do with getting 4,200 people in a week. We have an 83% increase in our shelter system in a year. 83%. And so we need to all come to, to the table and say, let's re-examine the laws to see how do we adjust to this issue. And so we want to make sure people are safe. Unlike El Paso, our folks, at, our children and families are not sleeping on the streets. We are feeding thousands of people, over 60,000. Uh, that came through our system, uh, uh, laundry service, the children are being educated, uh, me medical service, mental health support, uh, legal advice. <laughs> what we're doing is unprecedented to any other municipality. When we spoke to our mayors from the other cities, some of them say, we're no longer giving beds. We're just going to give a chair. We're leading the way. And so if we have to re-examine the law to make it adjust to the real life humanitarian crisis we have, then we have to do that. Joe. I would have called you, but he called Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mr. Mayor. How are you? How are you? Those are some cool shoes, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank um, I wanted to ask you about some of your efforts to do a sort of local decompression strategy. You're trying to send some of the, the migrants who volunteer to locations in the Hudson Valley. You've gotten pushback, and in some cases, some restraining orders have been issued. Um, I was wondering if you could address, you know, what are your thoughts about some of the uh, officials up there who have rejected your efforts, and can you give us any updates about talks with the governor, sort of who seems to be kind of playing a mediating role here, and some of the officials up there? Yes. Um, <clears throat> so we, we, and we must be clear on what we're doing, because some people try to compare it to what uh, Abbott did. We're paying for it. We're only taking volunteers. We are communicating with uh, the officials up there on what we're doing. Now, some may not like it, but people can't say we, we're not communicating. Abbott did not pay. Abbott compelled people. And one, uh, I remember reading a New York Post article of a 9-11 call that's saying that people were being held on buses. That's not what we're doing. And we are coordinating, explaining to our colleagues in the state that this is a this is a statewide issue. It's not like uh, New York just all of a sudden said we're just going to send people and 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 transport to some other municipalities. We're coordinating with others, and it took us over a year because we tried to hold on and do this the best we can on our own. And what we're sending sending is a quarter of one percent <laughs> of what we have. A quarter of one percent. And so when you look at uh, the uh, 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 the county exec day, uh, I mean, this guy has a record of being anti-Semitic, you know, his racist comments, uh, you know, his thoughts and how he responded to this. Really, it shows the lack of leadership. Uh, you know, I thought he was the Texas governor, the way he acted. We're going to continue to do, we're going to challenge the legal challenges, uh, and we're going to continue to pursue. You can't use the courts to deny people to move around the state of New York. Um, 
do you guys plan to appeal the restraining orders that have been placed? Can you appeal them? What are the next steps? Yeah, yeah, we, we're gonna we're gonna we're going to challenge all of the legal obstacles that are attempting to be placed in our way. We're going to challenge them because it was set a bad precedent. If someone is saying, you know, in the state of New York that, you know, you are not allowed to come here, you know, that's just a bad precedent. We could 